So this will be a solar eclipse in the sign of Taurus here at 2537 degrees of Taurus. This will sit in the Mikshra Natsatra, and we'll talk more about that as we move forward. But before we get into this, we have to understand what a solar eclipse is. Now, a lot of people will confuse this with a normal new moon. This is not exactly the same. A new moon is always going to be a period where it is great to start fresh. It's great to start something new. This period of a solar eclipse is happening when the sun is blocked out. And so during a solar eclipse, the moon will actually sit in between the sun and the earth, casting a shadow over the earth and blocking out the light of the sun. And so through a solar eclipse, we will not get the light of the sun. This will be a period of darkness. And this is a time where... Yes, this is happening during a new moon, but because there is no light, we're not seeing this new direction that we are going into. And so this is definitely a moment of taking a leap of faith, of trusting in where you're being guided and directed into, even though you're not seeing where you're going. And for some of you, depending on where this is in your chart, you may be starting a new opportunity or getting a new surprise in your life that is unexpected or this may be shifting you in a new direction without you being able to control the situation so there is a bit of a surprise or a shock to this as an eclipse is a period of intense change so this is definitely entering you into a new period in your life but this is something that is not seen or something that you are not aware of. Now, I also want to remind you all, similar to what we said in the video for the full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, is that an eclipse is happening with Rahu and Ketu. Now, because a new moon is when the sun and moon are together, this will happen with one of the shadow planets. And we currently have Rahu in Taurus. So this will be a new moon happening with Rahu. Now we talked a lot about K2 in the full moon lunar eclipse as the moon was sitting there in Scorpio with K2. Rahu is completely different. So both of these shadowy or illusionary planets, as we call them, are referring to the Maya, the illusion of the material world. K2 is known as the one that takes us out of the illusion. K2 is revealing to us the things that go beyond the physical, the things that lie beyond the surface. And this is why K2 feels at home in the sign of Scorpio, as Scorpio is all about uncovering the things that are hidden, right? The detective, the investigator, it is all about dealing with fears, trauma, and uncovering the occult knowledge and deeper information with that K2 energy. Rahu is quite different. Rahu feels at home in the sign of Aquarius. Now, as we know, Aquarius is controlling the 11th house originally in the Zodiac. And so that 11th house is all about our hopes and dreams, our gains, our wishes, right? Our ambition. And so... Rahu is all about this. Rahu is about our ambitions, our material desires. So Rahu is actually exposing the illusion, the Maya of the material world by taking us into the illusion where K2 would pull us out of the illusion. So Rahu is actually putting up smoke screens and is giving us our material desires, our wishes, our hopes, our dreams to show us that at the end of the day, no matter how much we receive, it is not going to fulfill us at the deepest level. So Rahu is a planet that actually is the opposite of K2. K2 gives us a lot of losses. It takes us out of the material world. It shows us what is beyond. Rahu gives us a lot of gains. 
right? Rahu is one of the number one planets that will give us the status, the reputation, the material gains, all the things that we want in life. And Rahu essentially is representing our unfulfilled desires from a previous lifetime. And this is why Rahu is that shadowy aspect of our personality that is all about our gains, our desires, this hunger for more, this hunger to achieve something in life. And so Rahu is actually coming from the story. And we talked a little bit about about this in that full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio, how the legend or the story behind Rahu and Ketu has to do with how they were rejected from the council of the gods and they were deemed as demons and not fitted to be on the council of the gods. And so Rahu and Ketu actually originally were one entity known as Rahu and Rahu went in and snuck into the godly cabinet and drunk from the elixir of immortality and as Rahu did this he was punished by Vishnu who came in and beheaded him and so Rahu was split into two the head being Rahu the body being Ketu so it's actually all one entity that is dealing with the illusion the maya the shadowy aspects of life but rahu is the head without a body so rahu is always hungry it's always looking for more it is about our ambitions our desires our hopes our dreams the things that we want to achieve in this material world and rahu is also dealing with the future is dealing with the unknown, right? Because Rahu is always searching for something in front of it to attain. So Rahu is dealing with the occult similar to K2 as well, but because Rahu is looking for something unknown, something new, something that is out of the ordinary. Rahu is never satiated. And so Rahu becomes very bored with the mundane, very bored with the ordinary, and eventually is looking for something more. And so where K2 is actually about the occult and mysticism because it is pulling us back into previous lifetimes and spirituality and all of this hidden knowledge, Rahu is also dealing with the occult and mysticism because it is pulling us into the unknown. It's pulling us into new territory. It's hungry for something new. So Rahu, similar to K2, is also dealing with occult knowledge, mysticism, spirituality. Rahu is more scientific, though, because Rahu wants to experience something new it is experimental right and that is where the unusual eccentric nature of aquarius comes in is rahu's co-rulership over aquarius so this is what makes aquarius different from the sign of capricorn which is also ruled by saturn similar to aquarius but rahu in there gives that eccentricity that unusual spin where it is out of the box out of the ordinary revolutionary, experimental, scientific, futuristic. And so Rahu is all about the future. It is all about our hopes, our dreams, our wishes, our desires, searching for something, hungry for something that is far out in front of us. And so that is where that 11th house also is the house of our ideas. It is the house of our bigger thoughts, right? It is this ability to think outside of the box. And so Rahu is a very clever planet as well, very cunning. Rahu is able to get what it wants by thinking outside of the box and doing things out of the ordinary. Rahu is also a planet that is dealing with our ambition in life, our ability to get things done. So Rahu out of all the planets gives us a tremendous amount of energy and drive to work towards our goals in life as well. So it is not all bad, right? When we talk about these planets, there's never all bad in anything. However, it is a malefic planet as it is dealing with those material desires that is ultimately an illusion because we come to the realization eventually that there is nothing materially that can fully satisfy our soul at the end of the day. 
Now, Rahu feels very comfortable in the sign of Taurus because Taurus is dealing with the material comforts of life, right? Taurus is originally controlling the second house of the Zodiac, which is all about our family values, our money, our security, our early upbringing. The things that make us feel comfortable and stable in life are all things connected to Taurus. And so Rahu feels very comfortable here in the sign of Taurus because of its materialistic nature, its connection to comfort, security, finances, family, all of the tangible things that we are connected to in this reality, in this lifetime, here is very much represented by the sign of Taurus. As Taurus wants to make us feel the most comfortable, it wants to make us feel the most secure, Taurus is a Venus-led sign. And Venus is all about how can we be happy and comfortable and safe and at peace in this life. Taurus, being an earth sign, does it through the physical. How can we implement physical, tangible things that give us that sense of pleasure and comfort in life? And so this is what Taurus is all about. And this is why Rahu feels very comfortable in the sign of Taurus. Rahu and Venus are very close friends. And so this transit here of Rahu and Taurus is an ongoing lesson that we are going through collectively that started back in 2020 when Rahu shifted into Taurus and K2 shifted into Scorpio. This Rahu Taurus has been a collective desire to move towards something that is comfortable, something that is stable, something that's familiar, something that is secure, while K2 at the other end of it is showing us that that is an illusion and we actually have to change and transform and work to improve and better ourselves internally. And so while we have been looking collectively for something outside of ourselves to bring that comfort, that stability, that familiarity of Taurus, this K2 Scorpio is saying, no, you have to look within yourself. You have to go internally to work and grow in your self and so this is where we're having this conflict collectively and this is very much connected to what we've been going through collectively with this covid pandemic and all of the things going on as far as racism and civil rights and all of these issues that are coming up to surface is that we all collectively want to move back into a place of what is familiar, what is comfortable, what is safe, and yet collectively we're also being shifted and pulled into this change, this transformation that is unescapable. This is something that we must face. So K2 is removing those blinders of what we believe materially, what we believe tangibly, and it's showing us at a spiritual, emotional, internal level that no, we have to change, we have to grow, we have to work on ourselves. And so this pandemic especially has pulled us within ourselves and out of the tangible, out of what is out there in the world through that Rahu Taurus what is actually going on inside of ourselves? What are the fears? What are the traumas? What are the things that we need to work on and improve internally within ourselves? So this has been the collective lesson or karma that we have been going through with this Rahu K2 axis of Taurus and Scorpio. And this relates so heavily to this eclipse season that we are in here that started with a lunar eclipse in Scorpio there on May 26th and will take us all the way into November of this year. And we've experienced this already back in 2020, but we are experiencing this again, where this is a time of reviewing the same karmic lesson, making sure that you are improving and bettering upon yourself to move into the direction of what is truly valuable to you, right? Taurus at the positive extreme is about what is valuable, what is true to our values, that second house being about our money, our security. What else do we refer to as our money and security, our values? And our early upbringing is also the values that have shaped us into who we are and what we believe in 
and how we are behaving in our life as adults. And so Taurus on the positive extreme is about what is valuable, what is worth it. On the negative extreme, it is too far into the materials, into the materialistic things of life. So what extreme are you at? Are you seeking something materially to satisfy, to nurture you, to fill up this internal hole that needs to be worked through? Or are you moving towards what is truly valuable, what is truly worth it, what truly is meant for you at the highest, greatest good? And this is where that K2 Scorpio comes in, where this internal work, this transformation, this healing, this self-improvement needs to take place where you're feeling that emptiness, right? Scorpio at the negative extreme is about our fears, our insecurities, our doubts, our worries, our emptiness, our sadness, our loneliness, right? Scorpio is a fixed water sign. It is about the extreme emotions. And so that emotional intensity that we feel internally, that we keep pushing away, that we keep stuffing down into the subconscious, it is time to face all of that so that you can move to your highest, greatest good, so that you can move to what is truly valuable and worth it in your life. 